Morning, uh, Steve Barraclough, Browning and Commercial Indications backed. Um, I'm here today at Aston. Uh, we've got a uh, pretty friendly match to be fair. Um, I've drawn peg 21 on Butts. Now, I like Butts Lake, it's a nice lake, but I think that it's a pretty hard area, is this? Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just talk you through my match I, I, as and when, you know, decisions I make, my rigs that I do, um, and then we'll just go through things throughout the day um, and just see how I get on. Right, just before match, I just want to run through my rigs because obviously the most important part. Now, my initial rig is is my dobbin rig, so it's just a little prototype float that we've been working on at Commercial Indications. Uh, what I've got is just a tiny float that takes four number tens. Now, what all I've got is I've got two tens under float that just that just cocks my float, and then I've just got two down the line. Now, all that does is trying to give that bit of bread or maggots, whatever you're trying to dob. Uh, a nice natural fall. Um, all it is, it's to 015 CNX power line, uh, which is a, a Browning line, um, and then I've just got 010 hook length to an 18 hook. Uh, I use fluorocarbon for my uh, for my hook lens for carp fishing in winter. Uh, I just believe it gets me that you know that 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 odd bite. Uh, I think a few things that's more more important. I think is a long lash between your float and your tip. For this rig, I think it's an important long lash between your floating your tip, and then the elastic that I'm using is um, is the Browning um, microball range, uh, and it's the pink one, which is about a grade seven or something like that. Like I said to you before, I use everything through these short kits, so I've just got a short one piece of elastic all the way through. My next rig is is another dobbin rig, uh, but this is slightly different. Um, I think you'll see it's slightly different. Again, it's a 0.2 float, and I've got two shot under the under the float, and then I've got two down the line. Now this is quite a positive float though. This one, it's got a dead dead short lash, and this is for something. It's a little bit different to that other one. Now with regards to saying that I had a long lash, this is another dobbin rig, but I have this set up with a slightly heavier heavier float in case they're right in the grasses. So in other words, if the bank's undercut or anything like that, then I haven't got a problem with pushing my pole right into it and because I've got a dead short lash with two back shot on there that really control that float I don't know if you can see that, well there's just two number eights there just a short and then I've got a short lash, I mean what's that, five inch or something like that, four to five inch lash um, and I've got a point two float, commercial indications float dead stubby bristle but something I can see and then like I say it's just got two shot down the line everything else is the same material, up length, everything else is the same uh, but I, I feel that's important sometimes like I said with that long lash you, you're going to end of the grasses and you're trying to catch up and down them grasses but there's times where you have to push your pole right into the grasses and this rig sometimes will outfish that other one so I just set them both up just in case the other rig I've set up is a maggot rig. Um, this is for three quarters of the way over. It's, it's only shallow, like I said before, it's only probably two and a half, three foot deep. Um, again, it's a, it's a similar float to, to what I use for pushing across into the grass. It's a nice float that I can see. Uh, you have to be able to see because obviously tiny little indications this time of year. Again, it's on the same material, 015 main line. I like a nice robust main line. Uh, one, because it's stiff and it reduces tangles. Uh, and two, just because it, it it makes me rigs versatile so because I'm using 015 it doesn't necessarily mean that I've got to use them from October till March you know I can actually get these rigs out um, in, in, in summertime and still be able to use them. Shotting's a little bit different on this um, again I also have a, sh a, a shot under my float I like to do that one because one it, it, it semi cocks your float so it helps it over so then what happens is especially in maggot fishing you're actually following the bait down um, and there's times, it doesn't matter what, unless you're using the heavy metal, um, the other materials, there's times your float can sit there and it can sit on the surface. By having a shot just under your float, it just 
cuts through the surface tension uh, and it acts as a marker as well it's a nice depth marker so for, ever, for, for instance if you're to ever break or lose a fish and your float were to move it's a nice depth marker to just pull your, just to pull your float back down to again I use back shot they're just two number eight back shot um, and again I'm using the uh, the micro bar elastic this is the orange one it's the one down from uh, from the one there it's probably about five grade something like that and then again it's just slightly different I've got 010 to a 20 hook um, but again I've got spread shot so as I lay my rig in I'll tap my bait in as I lay my rig in it just goes over natural and basically what you're trying to do is just run it past a fish's nose because um, as I say they're not really competing at this time of year and if you can just run your maggots or your pellets whatever you're fishing just run past the nose chances are they'll go down and follow it and eat it the other thing I've just got a little pot on um, dead simple just keep it nice and easy a little pot just I just tap few maggots in at a time um, and because because it's a medium pot I can actually reduce the amount or increase the amount that I'm using because just because you've got that size pot on it doesn't mean you have to fill it every time you know a pot like that can probably take 40 maggots and, and there's times where I've just fed six maggots um, but it, it's it's quite a, quite a nice little tip for when I was preparing the two lines I'm able to um, I'm able to just tap a few on that line and tap a few on that line you can physically just count them down to be fair um, and it's quite nice uh, to do that throughout the day um, and that's really about it I mean my match is going to be kept really simple as I say I'm going to be I'm going to be uh, dobbing bread and maggots across I always start on bread just to give myself that best chance because I think it's a bit more selective um, and as I say chances are I can catch more carp and if I'm on a, if I'm on a stack of carp it'll keep going under um, failing that I'll start dobbing maggots because you've a chance of catching anything on them um, and then like I said before I'll, I'll come shorter try and catch them with maggots um, and then hopefully I'll catch feeding fish as they're feeding towards end of day right so we, we're only just well I'll say about 15 minutes in um, and basically what I'm trying to do is I'm starting off dobbing so what I'm really doing what by I mean by dobbing is I'm not feeding any bait at the start I'm literally trying to see if there's any feeding fish in my peg or fish that are not feeding in my peg um, now the best way to do this normally is to look for any sort of feature uh, that's in your peg um, on butts here quite a lot of the times a lot of these grasses across um, and a lot of time when especially when you get to your, to your peg obviously the more disturbance is on this near side bank so the cover is brilliant for them so most of the time the fish tend to back off into the cover at the start and then as the day goes on the fish will gradually come out um, and then obviously sometimes they'll have a feed if we're lucky now what we're trying to do by dobbing is we're trying to go into the little areas where we think the fish might back off into so as you sit down um, just give yourself five minutes at the start of a match and think to yourself where would you go if you were a fish as in like what's where you know any sort of cover any sort of grass or anything like that the fish are going to feel a lot more safer under them sort of things so what, what I try and do is I try and look for these areas and then at the start what I'll do with my rig is I'll go across and I'll plumb in these little areas where I feel that the fish could be hanging out and you get a general feel of your peg I mean nine times out of ten these these new like these newer modern commercial fisheries will have a similar depth amongst that far bank um, I mean it's only probably two foot deep if that across now this is still plenty enough depth for these fish to hang out and sit uh, just purely because of the cover now if there were no cover and I were to go across the far bank I wouldn't feel like there were any fish there um, so all I'm generally doing is going up and down going up and down the far bank because you're not hurting your peg so if you start by dobbing you're not hurting anything if you go across and put a load of bait in and the fish are there not really wanting to feed there's potential of ruining your peg before you've even started really I mean what I have got I've got a dobbing rig that will just go all across these grasses uh, two best baits for me for dobbing um, is is bread I think that's number one just because it's so fluffy and easy and I think it's so easy for the fish to pick out um, and also white maggots I think that's this year for some reason white maggots has been as good or if not better than bread um, don't ask me why possibly they might have got used to that piece of bread just hanging there and obviously the fish normally eat maggots 
Um, so two white maggots, I say white because I just think, you know, it's just maybe a confidence thing um, because I'm just replicating the bread, but it's just something a bit different. So not dead, make sure the white live maggots. So all you're trying to do is you're trying to put the bait in front of the fish because nine times out of 10, the fish will have a go at the bait because there's no, the fish are inquisitive and there's no other way for them to see what it is. So for instance, if if something were put in front of us that we, did, we weren't sure what it is, we're able to pick it up, feel it, smell it, that sort of thing, whereas a fish can't do that. If a fish is inquisitive, the only thing they can do is suck it in. Um, so nine times out of 10, if you dangle a bait in front of a, especially a car, because obviously they're eating machines, um, nine times out of 10, you'll probably get a bite. Uh, but it's all about location um, when you're dobbing. It's all, it's all about location. And the first thing you want to do is not ruin your peg at the start. So by main location, what I try and do is, what you've got to understand is when you sat on your peg, what you don't really want to do is, if there are any fish in front of you, you don't really want to be pushing them too far out your peg. So although you're dobbing up and down far bank, you don't really want to do it all too quick. So what I mean by that is, if I just went up and down all far bank within 10, 15 minutes, and I feel like there were none there, or I caught one right under my peg, chances are I'll catch one there and the fish will move even further out my peg. Now, if I give myself a good five to 10 minutes in each spot, there's times where you think there isn't a fish there, then all of a sudden you'll, it'll just go under. And I've done that a, long, a lot of times. And nine times out of 10, if you go back on that same area where you've just caught one, chances are you probably get another bite. So it's just about locating where the fish are. That's the hardest part. And again, that's just, it, most of it is just reading your peg um, and experience. Failing that, I've got two maggot lines, um, which I'll start feeding. Um, after I feel like I've done done my job dobbing. I mean, there's times where I've not fed anywhere else in my peg and I've just managed to stay on a dobbing rig all day. Um, them, don't get me wrong, them days are few and far between, but you would have never known that you could do that if you didn't give yourself that chance across. So by doing what you're doing, try and see if you can find any fish first without feeding any bait anywhere else. And then what you do then is, you'll start introducing bait onto other lines. So in this case, it's about 30 meters across. I've got two lines, uh, left and right. Uh, it's about three foot deep. It's not very deep here, you see. Uh, and I'm just gonna drip feed maggots on both uh, in aim to catch um, eyed and the odd carp thrown in. Um, doing what we're doing now, we're really solely trying to aim for carp, if I'm honest with you. Don't get me wrong, you'll take anything that takes your float under, but really we're trying to catch them carp that are just hid away in them grasses. Right, so I'm still dobbing across at the minute. Um, <laughs> now the problem is, I've had an eyed, uh, oh, it's only a small fish, and I've bumped two fish. I mean, I've just bumped one then. Um, the problem is, it's, it's really difficult, and I'm, I can't work out. I've just changed my depth a little bit because the first one I hooked, it just shot off. Um, so obviously, it's foul look now. I've just come a little bit shallower, and I've just had an indication which I lift, lifted on. And as I was shipping back, it's come off. Now, sometimes they're up to it just around the mouth. Um, so I'm presuming that's the case because it, it didn't really feel like it were up properly. Um, but it's a good sign because obviously I've had, I think I've missed two bites, which I've then gone in and either foul hooked or hooked to fish, which including that eye. Um, and it's weird because I've, I've had that eyed and found and hooked two fish all in the same little area so it gives you a little bit of confidence then to go back to that area because I, nine times out of ten if you find or locate where there's some fish the fish normally when one or two feels safe there's normally three or four or five you know there's normally quite a few fish that are normally within that area because when one feels safe they all follow suit it's a bit like sheep i suppose um so I'm just pers persevering in this little tiny little area here. Like I say, it's nice when you get a few indications because you've something to work at. I mean, there's nothing worse than going to your peg and you don't get no signs at all because obviously you get no bites, you can't work at anything. Like I say, I got an indication, come back, changed my depth, went back out and I got an eyed. Um, that were a tiny little indication again then. Again, it's same area. Um, but again, I, I have changed my depth, um, but it's just one of them. You, you never know how far off bottom they are. Obviously when you're dobbing, you go across, you get a feel for it, you, you, you mark it up on your pole tip, 
and as a general rule of thumb I normally then move, move my float six inch so I'm starting six inch off bottom um, because I feel that that's a, a nice depth to start at Re the reason being is I think if the I think if they're any further up you'll get indications, you'll see it on your float and I think if you start higher, chances are the fish could be underneath it. So I think 6 inch off bottom is, n is a nice depth to start at. And then, you know, you might end up at a foot, there's, there's, I've, I've had it loads, of, I've had it, you know, quite, quite often where you can be sat there, it's 2 foot deep, you start 6 inch off bottom, you've got indication, indication, you come back, shallow it up, indication, and then you might foul up one. You'll change your depth again, go back in, and then you'll never you'll never miss another bite because you sat, you, 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 your rig and your bait is at the depth what the fish are sat at, uh, and that's what you're trying to do. I mean, what you you know you're trying to get your rig and and get it to the depth that the fish are sat at. Then obviously it's straight in front of the mouth. Um, there's less faff in them because you obviously. If, if your bait is below where the fish are, you're constantly moving your bait, laying it in, dropping it, moving it all the time. When it's sat in front of the noses, chances are you lay your rig in it, it'll go under because it's, it's directly in front of the fish. Um, so it's a nice, it's, it's, it's good if you can locate the fish. That's the hardest part, I'll be honest with you. That is the hardest part. But when you do locate it, chances are what you will do is you might hook a couple or miss a few bites or whatever and all the fish will do is they don't generally just swim off and go around right the other side of the lake generally they just move a little bit so they won't move far they'll just move maybe a foot or two foot to the right or to the left of that feature um, especially when there's you know grasses along the whole of the far bank and they'll sit there for a little bit so that's why it's important to have a rig that you can just go up and down all your lines um, and just get a general feel of your peg. I mean, like I say, it might come another half an hour, I'll get no more signs anywhere, and then I'll start and introduce a little bit of bait. Um, but I won't do it across, because I always give myself that, that chance of going back over, uh, letting the fish regroup, you know, going back to where they were comfortable, the home, you know, the winter home, letting them regroup, and giving myself another chance of going back over there. And then failing that, if I, if I don't catch on my maggot lines three quarters of the way over um, and I don't catch it, anything when I go back over dobbing, you can start introducing bait then. The reason being is because you're not going to hurt anything. You're not getting bites dobbing, you're not getting bites on your other lines, so you might as well start and introduce some bait over. Um, but that's always my last last resort. I'll always introduce bait over last, you know, last if I can't get any bites anywhere else. Because then what happens then, if the fish don't want to feed, the only way that they can go is sideways. If the fish don't want to feed at 11 metres and it's 30 metres wide, they can back off and they can go off into them grasses. If I don't catch it at 11 metres or I catch a couple and they've backed off, I've still got me, I've still got the option of following them across. Now if I put bait in down middle and I put bait in across, the only way they can go is sideways. And then when they go sideways, they go out your peg. Um, so that's just something to think about the next time you sat, uh, next time you sat on your peg and you know, you can't get a bite, I would be reluctant to just go, at this time of year, obviously it's different in summer because the fish are feeding and they want to be in that nice shallow water, um, but at this time of year I'd be reluctant to go straight over and feed any bait. Right, so I've just had a few indications in one spot and it's like I said before, what happens is you get a couple of indications or hook one or whatever and I've just literally moved a foot, not far, just a foot, to one side and it's gone straight under and I've managed to hook a carp. They're not very big, but when it's hard going, obviously everything counts. So it just proved my point in what I was saying regarding, um, regarding you just moving around. Um, and I've cut, I caught that one on maggots. I mean, they're not a bad size. They're a good stamp, banging lips. So that, that tells me that I'm fishing at right depth. Because it will bang it top lips. So that tells me that I'm fishing at right depth. Now, if I were, if I were looking them, you know, bottom or around the cheek, then I'd be looking to change my depth again. But all I did then, well, I was in an area where I was getting a few indications and stuff. I was literally moved to a foot, put my rig in and I caught one straight away. I've, it's also interesting that I've gone from bread to double white maggots. Just because, I always start on bread just to give myself a chance because if it's a 50-60 pound day, 
you probably won't come off bread. Now, the reason I've put maggots on is because you've got a chance of hooking everything. You can hook an hide, you can hook a big roach, you can hook absolutely everything on maggots. But the main thing is I've located a few fish, that's what's, that's the main thing to be honest. Um, it's just quite difficult to get it in amongst the grasses because I'm using a, a pretty long lash between the float and my tip now. Obviously it's only two foot across so I think that's mega important. Um, to fish a decent size lash, but what I do is I put two number eight back shot on. Right, we're probably two hours in now. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I've changed my lines now. Um, I've come back and I started introducing a little bit of bait at 11 meters. Um, now, what I did was, I didn't just come back and start putting bait in. While I were over there, I felt like I was getting less and less signs. Um, I've had one more fish over there, uh, but I just felt like it wasn't really happening as though you want on a stack so what I've done now is previous to going on it where I felt like I was going to be going on this I just got my kinder pot and half filled it with maggots and I fed both the lines so I probably only put six or eight maggots on each line and then ten minutes later or five minutes later I've done that again so I've almost fed the, the peg twice and then all you're trying to do is just create a little bit of activity going through that peg and just try and get a bit of response so when you do go on that line hopefully you'd have a few fish there waiting now i have gone to my left to start with first dropping i've had a carp it's only small about eight ounce um, and then what i've done then is i've fed that line and come to this line i mean on an ideal match you you would feed that line catch one you know top it up with a few maggots you only want six or eight maggots come onto this line catch one off this line and do and repeat the process in an ideal situation that's what will happen but generally one side's better than the other um, but as the match is progressing um, I'm pretty confident that I'll probably catch more and more fish on these two lines uh, but like I said I haven't ruined me across across uh, lines yet because I've introduced no bait um, so if the fish don't want to feed or if they want to feed you catch a few and the, you know you're giving them somewhere to gutter rather than out of your peg so like I said rather than putting that bait across there for now it might be something I do later but it's certainly not something I'm doing for the next hour or so um, I'll introduce bait in here see where I can catch on these two lines if I don't catch I'll just go back over dobbing and like I said the last resort then is to start tapping bait over I've kept it nice and simple today all I've got on my bait tray is uh, maggots and bread uh, generally just for dobbing and just the maggots are just feeding these sort of two lines um, reason being is just because it's fishing difficult um, I know we're fishing quite hard there's always going to be on these style of lakes there's always going to be one or two anglers that sit on some carp they're going to sit where they're most comfortable um, so by doing what we do as in respect of going across you're almost trying to see if you're on what you call the stack so you, you, you're trying to see if you're on the shoulder car you you will never know that by just looks at it looking because nearly all the pegs look the same so by just going across giving yourself every chance I start on bread because it's more selective for carb uh, and then I change to maggots because it'll give me a bite off anything and then I'll start introducing bait on my 11 meter lines and then if I can't catch anything here I'll go back across to see if they've backed off uh, in over there dobbing and then last resort then I'll put maggots over there um, I mean the, the small carp and you, you'd think that they were pellet fish really I mean they're, they're ideal pellet fish but I've done it a lot of times I've come here quite often and tried to introduce micros and an expander which generally with that stamp of fish you would normally fish you would normally just fish you know micros in an expander but for some reason you don't seem to catch them just yet another three or four weeks and you know you won't be able to get through the eye to get to the carp on maggots so you have to feed a pellet line uh, but as it stands um, maggots are probably the best thing to get your bites right i think we're about two and a half hours into match now um, as you can see i've changed my line um, and to some extent it's it's working a little bit um, like i said before i'm just alternating my lines just alternating um, between left and right it's exactly the same depth um, what was interesting was when i first came on this line 
Oh, there we go. Just got an eye. But what was interesting is I started, because of how hard it is, I started on single single maggots. Uh, I've just introduced in a few maggots and I just started on single maggots, as I said, because how hard it is. And I just, I felt like there were an odd fish there. And I come back and I changed the double maggot, it went straight and I got it went straight under. And I couldn't believe how instant it was. Um, so like I said, all I did then was come back, put a few maggots in, then changed and went onto my other line. Now, since I've been doing this, I think I've had three carp and two eyed. And I've probably only been doing it half an hour. I mean, it don't sound like I'm bagging, but when you actually look round, there's not that many people catching. Um, I've seen young Bradley catch a few on point on corner there, uh, but other than that, I haven't really seen anybody catching out, and I certainly haven't seen anybody catching out while feeding anything. Um, so that tells me that this isn't a bad move because I also I automatically think that if you're still catching dobbing across, there's just more fish in front of you. Right, we're just nearly coming into the last hour. Um, well, I've got one on now as it happens, but I just had a little quiet spell. Um, so I just decided to just up my feed a little bit, um, just to see if I could create some, some activity, really, because I went from getting an odd bite to catching nothing. So I just felt like I had nothing to lose. So I've just up my feed a little bit, not by a lot. Um, and I've just upped two in two drops. So it felt like to me that it were a good decision. Um, as it happens, it's normally it's normally it's case one line's better than another. My left hand line's been better than my right without a shadow of a doubt. But it was strange, but because when I was dobbing, I caught most of my fish or most of my indications to my right. So it just goes to show that you have really got to search your peg. Put some bait in. You've really got to search your peg and. It's just a matter of just keeping ticking over now. I mean, we're getting into the last hour. I'd like to think that if some fish are going to feed, this will be the time that it'll happen. Um, so it's just a matter of just rotating my lines and just trying to, you know, just trying to keep an odd fish in your peg because it's fishing hard. Now, the thing is with it, if it, if it were fishing really well and I felt I were in an area where I wasn't catching anything, then I'd, I'd make some harsh decisions. I'd almost make try and make something happen so for instance i might you know big pot somewhere or do something but because it's fishing hard i feel like i've just got to just keep ticking over and just keep in match because there's, there's times when you just can't win do you know what i mean there's, there's times when you draw out of it especially this time of year where you just can't win but i feel i'm getting enough indications to, to just keep myself in it and then hopefully in the last hour um it'll pick up and you just never know i mean because i've noticed a lot of the people that are catching fish are still fishing over dobbing so to me that just feels that there's just more fish there because they're able to carry on doing that now i felt like i wasn't getting enough indications when i was dobbing and started feeding maggots um, and i've had more indications since i started feeding um, than I did when I was just dobbing across, which is to me is it's a nice sign because obviously if I'm going to catch a weight I'll be able to catch feeding fish rather than going across and catching the fish that are there. Um, so hopefully with an hour to go anything can happen. You're always in it in fishing world and you know whenever whatever match you're on unless someone's running away with it you never know what's going to happen. Right, we're into the last 15, 20 minutes of match now. Um, if I'm honest, I thought it was going to get better. Uh, but it hadn't, it's got worse. Um, I did try and push my peg, as I say, when I, as I reached into the last hour, just because I felt like I was giving myself best chance of still winning the match. Um, but as it happened, what happened is I, I initially started putting a little bit more in. When I say a little bit more, 
I was putting six to eight maggots and I went to like maybe double that, maybe 12 maggots or so. So not really big potting it and overfeeding it, but I just felt like I was just trying to push my peg a little bit. As it happened, I had a little flurry and then I couldn't get an indication. I couldn't get a sign for a long time. And I, I didn't know if I'd just over, overcooked it a little bit. So what I did then was just consistently just carried on just feeding five or six maggots. Again, through a pot, keeping it nice and tight, uh, just to give myself last half an hour or so, maybe just to get a, a little run of fish. Um, so then, so obviously it went quiet. I started putting, you know, a few maggots in again. Um, and then I've gone in and I've had a carp and an eyed off one line. I've just missed a bite off this, this line now. Um, so, like I said, pushing my peg was probably the wrong decision on day. Um, but until I did it, I, w I wouldn't have known that. But because I haven't really big potted it and, and really gone for it, I've only just upped my feed, if you like. I haven't, you know, buggered my peg up. So I was still able to then go back after my blank spell and just go back and start introducing just a very few maggots. Um, it's been a funny day, really. I mean, it's been quite warm, if I'm honest with you. Um, and I thought that I would get a flurry of fish here, go back across and maybe just finish my match across. And I've, I've tried that and what happened was I went across and I never got a bite. So I thought, right, okay, really if I'm going to catch anything now, it would be on these two lines that I'm on now. Um, so again, I've just alternated between the two lines and it's been, just been really, really hard. Um, I mean, there's angles that, that have left the pegs now and, you know, left to me right, it's gone. And, because it's, it's just hard, you know, but it's one of them things and I think the, the biggest thing to take from today is to is to just not not bugger your match up before you've started. There you go, I've got one. See, so it's, it's dead strange that you can go in and, and think that there's no fish there, change your feeding pattern or change what you've got up again, like say from single to double maggot, and all of a sudden you start getting a few bites. The most frustrating part today is I haven't had a I haven't been able to get bites consistently, so it makes it, because you can't get bites consistently over your lines, it sort of makes your, your match harder to run. That is, if I can consistently get bites over two lines, you know, you can, it's a lot easier, you know, to run through your match through day because, you know, you do your things at start with your dobbing and everything, and then as your match you know, goes it grows, generally it gets a little bit better towards back end um, and you're able to sort of work out where your best line is. And if I'm honest with you, it's been really difficult to do that today just because it's been so hit and miss between the lines. And like I said to you earlier, you could go in sometimes and get a bite instantly as soon as float settled. And then there's times where you're having to wait, you know, six or seven minutes for a bite. Um, but then you might miss it, and then there's chance, you know, and so you know there's one there, but then you might wait another, you know, five minutes before you get even an indication. So I just think that because there ain't that many feeding fish about, I think you're hooking fish, and I, you know, and I think you're just disturbing whatever fish are there, and then it's just taking a while for them to regroup again. Um, whereas when they're feeding confidently, you hook a fish, and they just regroup quicker because they're competing for bait. Uh, whereas I don't feel that they are today, but I felt like it were a good plan putting a little bit of bait in because it's just trying to create a little bit of competition um, and that, like I said before, that doesn't mean to say they're jumping up line and everything, but it's just making them inquisitive to come into your peg. Um, and like I said before, I have gone back across and I never had a bite, so I've just alternated between these two lines. Hopefully, you know, next 10 minutes or so, you can still up two or three carp and it can take you right back up, so we'll see. Right, I just want to recap on my match today. Um, it hasn't gone really according to plan, if I'm honest. I mean, if it wants to go according to plan, I wouldn't have stopped, I'd have just carried on across. It'd have gone under every chuck and I'd have caught under a pound, everyone's smiling and laughing. It never works out like that, we know that. It's fishing, it's winter. Um, so basically, I've got to say, I've had to work a lot harder than I thought for my bites today. Um, I went across and I've dobbed, uh, started dobbing bread. I missed two bites, uh, which, 
you know, could be line bite, so you could have had anything on hook, it wouldn't have really mattered. Um, and then I felt like I wasn't going to catch anything, if I'm honest with you, on bread. So I've changed the maggots and I instantly caught a carp. Um, as it happened, it did come off on the way back, but I went back in and I caught another. Cut long story short, I had a few indications across on maggots just dobbing. Um, probably two hours in, I started just just feeling my way into my match, so I started just kindering some maggots in on two lines. Um, I went on it and I instantly caught you know, a couple of fish and I started getting a few indications. Cut long story short, I've really persevered on, on these two lines because I felt that that were my best two lines throughout the day. Um, I've, I've, only fed, I've only fed them two, two areas in my peg. Um, just simple reason is I felt that that were, that were the best areas that I was going to get bites from. I've purposely left across the far bank because chances are, you know, as you go through your match, they couldn't just back off. Um, and I, as it happens today, they haven't. I mean, I've tried to push my peg. With an hour to go, I started twatting in a few more maggots just to see if I could make something happen, which I'm, I like to do something like that because I like to come off bank and think, I think I've done everything I can today. Um, and if I come out, go away and start driving home thinking, I wish I'd have put a few more maggots in, then, you know, it, you start kicking yourself. At least if I've tried it, you know, I can go away feeling a bit more satisfied. I've just got to wait for scales to arrive. I, I honestly don't know who's got what, I'll be honest with you, um, because I'm, I'm tucked up out of corner, I'm tucked up out of way. I know um, young Bradley's caught a few on that corner. Nice little peg, a little bit more room, so he's had more areas to go at when he's been dobbing. I believe he hasn't come off his dobbing rig. Um, I don't think he's got a massive weight, but you know, I think, he, I think he's done done best from this area um, but it's winter fishing you know it, it's never going to be easy you know there's times in winter you can go out and have the easiest day of your life go out and it can just go under because you're on that ball of cart but as it happens I haven't been on that and it just goes to show I'm on a human. Right there's my net I've ended up with I think £13.10 it's been really hard as you can see there's a few mixture of hide and carp in there um, I'm not so sure how that's done to be honest. I've heard of a £16 down there and uh, Brad on ends had £36 I think. Um, like I say, it's been really difficult. Um, I believe that this is the best way in this little area here. Um, but like I said, the main thing was just chopping and changing. Um, if I could have fished my match again, the only thing I would have done is not lose up to a cart. <laughs> if I'm being really honest with you. Uh, I'll just pop these back. And just one last thing, I'd just like to thank Browning as normal, you know, great sponsorship. Uh, commercial indications, you know, obviously they're a good backing. Um, and obviously fishing for info and asking for having us.